be doing some of the technical instructions on how to operate some of the equipment on this van here so that when you do get out on the road if you run into any trouble you can just go back to the video and you'll be able to get exactly what you need to do in order to make it work. First thing I'm going to talk about is this electric awning on top of here. I'll have to step up here. It's a one button system. You just push the button. Awning automatically comes out as soon as you push it. It'll, it extends out real far so just let it go quite a ways. It's got some legs on it. Uh, you don't have to use those legs, but it does help with the stability if you get a little bit of wind going on. So I'm going to put it out and I'll put one of the legs down so you can see exactly how that works. So you pull this down, get it on the ground, put a little pressure on it, and then lock it back in place, and you're 100% good to go. So there's two ways you can run a lot of this system here. One is with the vehicle running, because when it's started, the alternator is feeding the battery. The battery is feeding power, DC power, into the inverter, which translates it into 110 volts, which is just like your house. And the other, the other way would be with shore power, which we have a long cable here. And I'll pull that out and show you exactly how you would plug that in when you're at the campground. So what we've done here, and this is to hook up your shore power. This is a big 50-foot reel. This is what you're going to use at the campground. So it's just a matter of grabbing the plug, pulling out this yellow extension cord here, and then plugging it in. You're going to have some type of a power source there. This is a 15-amp circuit. If they have 30-amp, all you need to do is just get an adapter. 30-amp is the one with like the three little moons on it. You plug that on here, and then you would plug that right into the campground. In this case here, we're just 15-amp. So you plug that in to the campground and you're all set. So when you are at the campground and you're plugged in on shore power, as we've been talking about, we've got these two plugs here, the air conditioner and the solar inverter for the back battery. Um, the solar or the shore power, just think of it like this. This is the other end of a long extension cord. It's just a little box right inside of here. So you plug your air conditioner into that utility box and you plug your solar inverter in there. Now all the power from the campground is going right into your uh, coach and then everything will operate and charge and do exactly what you need it to do. So we've got two plugs here as we've been talking about. We've got the air conditioner and we've got the solar inverter. The solar inverter is the generator, the battery pack in the back of the vehicle. So when the van's running we can have this plugged into the inverter and it'll send juice back there in order to charge that inverter or for running the air conditioner. You could create a situation that's not perfect where if you have them both plugged in, we put a white plug in here so you can't get two of them in, but if you were to pull that out and do it, um, you could end up with a situation where it's consuming so much power that your GFI switches on your electrical outlets are gonna completely kick out um, because it's not grounded uh, properly for all that. If you're boondocking and you do not have shore power, you can start the van, that'll give it enough power in order to kick the AC in and it just came on, which is, which is good. What we're looking for here, now the AC is plugged into the inverter, what we're looking for here, there's a bunch of lights on this here inverter and the green is really, really good. Yellow means we're consuming power. When we get down to the red, that's starting to get into an area of your, your, your battery, your alternator is feeding the battery and your battery can't, your alternator can't keep up with the power consumption it's trying to use. So if that gets into the red zone, you possibly are getting into an area where the air conditioning is actually going to kick off because it's not enough. It wants to keep enough power in the battery so you can still start the van. So it just goes into like a limp mode. Um, right now we're still okay though. It's, it shows yellow basically just saying that we're consuming uh, power. So if that does happen, what you'd want to do is you'd want to, you know, Shut the AC off for a while. Maybe you can cycle it back on again in a little in a little bit. Uh, leave the van running, and it'll charge that battery back up. So this is a solar inverter in the back of the vehicle. Um, so what we have is we've got two 100 watt solar panels up on the roof. They feed power into this. But we also that front inverter. We've got that uh, plugged into the uh, inverter for the back one here. So if power is needed back here because you're in a cloudy area and you need a charging. That'll send power back here to keep this one fully charged uh, at all times. Otherwise, the sun usually just uh, is enough to keep it up. Uh, 
when you want to run this, the very first thing is uh, there's a button on the bottom here. You put this button, you hear a little sound, and it'll show you exactly where we're at. And this is showing where it, we have 100% uh, power. This is full. There's nothing going in, nothing coming out. There's two watts uh, indicators on top of this here. The very first thing we need to do to get power out of this, and we have it on the screen here, there's a little button on the back of this machine. You want to push that. You're going to hear a little beep. And then right on the screen, it's going to say 60 hertz, which is 110 volts. And there's a little picture of a plug next to it. When you see that and it's on, on the screen, um, it's working. Now power will come out of this here. So now you can start to um, run whatever you wanted to run inside the, the vehicle. So as far as the solar and generator goes, really only two troubleshooting things that could make this where it's not working. Number one, you haven't pushed that button. So then when you look at the screen, you're not going to see that 60 hertz on there. That's one thing. But the other would be, if I pull this out, there's one cable behind here. It's just an electrical, uh, again, a plug inside of another one. If that comes undone, and it says solar inverter right on it, if that comes undone, uh, this will not work. That's supplying part of this. All right, now I'm just going to go through the control panel here so you understand all the switches on here. There, everything is labeled. This one says rear window. Rear window is really this plug right here. It's turning the power on that one. Refrigerator. That's going to turn on your refrigerator. Pump. That turns on the pump under the sink. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, so it's a self-priming pump. So when you're not, if there's no water in the system, make sure this is turned off. We don't want to burn that out. Sink. There's uh, electrical outlets up by the sink. So when you, that activates those. Lights. There's lights on the back of the vehicle here. And there's lights in the ceiling up front, some LEDs. When that's on, uh, that activates those lights. But then you make the adjustments with the switch up there. Seat and USB, right in the back here, we've got some electrical outlets and USB again. That turns those on, and this one is not doing anything at this point. The last thing here that we're going to talk about back here is the bed. Um, so again, this has to be that, that little plug, the power going out with this. Otherwise, this will not work. You push this button right here, brings your bed down. It's going to go down as far as these actuators will take it. As soon as you hear that noise, you can just stop, and then you're all the way down. Put it back up, you just push it up again. Gets to the top, and again, it's just going to stop. You'll hear a couple of clicking noises, and just um, let the switch go. So what we've done here is we've taken the two cushions, and we just put them up to the front of the vehicle there to get them out of the way, because we're going to make the bottom uh, twin bed. So it's a matter, there's one little hook on here. You pull this up, this slides out, locks into place so it's not gonna go anywhere. Pull this one down. Now you just take your cushions, put them back on top, and your bed is uh, ready to go. Now when it comes time to close this, and because you're done using it again, cushions, up to the front of the vehicle. Pull this back up again. Now here's a little bit of a tricky part. There's two little clips, one on each side here. You have to hold that up and kind of get it started because it's unlocking it from that lock position. Then you just come to the other side and do the other one. Pull the pin up, put your cushions back on, and you're good to go. Okay, so now we do have water inside the uh, inside of the tank here, um, and I have that plug and back turned on for the for the pump. And now all we do is turn on the water. You hear the pump kick in, and you get all the water that you need. Shut it off, and the pump will stop. That water will drain into the wastewater tank on the bottom here. So you've got two tanks under here. You've got a clean water and wastewater. A um, couple trouble shooting tips. If you do trip the GFI switches, there's one underneath here. If the pump won't run, check that and see if the little red light is on. If it is, just push it and you're going to be fine. And then also make sure that pump is actually plugged in. And then these tanks, it's just a matter of unclipping the fast clip off here. Um, pull the tank out. And this is just regular water. You can just dump it behind a tree or whatever you want to do with it. The other one, the clean water is the same thing. When you're ready to fill it, you unclip that and just fill it up.
I've just started the vehicle, which is to demonstrate the power source coming from the van. Uh, so what's happening now is the power is from the battery is running into the inverter, and then now we've got these cords inside of here. One is labeled air conditioner, one is labeled uh, solar inverter. We have a solar inverter in the back of the vehicle that we can send power back to. But first we're going to start with this air conditioner. So in order to make this here work, it's not plugged in anything right now, so we have to put it inside the inverter here, and it's just like plugging something in at home. So now we've got power going to the AC unit. Now it's just a matter of turning the AC unit on. You've got this little remote here, and then what you do is you just push this here uh, red button twice. That's going to turn on the power going to the air conditioner. And then we want to just make sure that we are on Fahrenheit. It's just a matter of pushing it right on the key here. It says Fahrenheit and Celsius. So we just want to push that and it just kicked up. We do have the ability to uh, swivel this seat all the way around so it's facing the back of the vehicle. Keep in mind that if it's in that back position, you're trying to start the van to leave your campground, it's not going to run. It's, it, it's, it stalls out the vehicle, doesn't allow it to, it's a safety mechanism. So in order to make this seat swivel, the one on the outside edge, you just kind of pull up on it a little bit to get the seat back to come forward so you can get past the B-pillar. Then there's the same switch on the other side, you pull that one, and the seat will flip all the way around. And then once you're in this position, these armrests here, there's a little turning dial on the bottom of it to get it back into a better position. And you push the seat back so it's more comfortable. And then you, another lever here, bring this forward. Now you've got a little workstation. These vans are set up with the digital rear view mirror. So you can use it like a regular mirror. Now it's just regular glass and I can see behind me. Or if I just flip this forward, turns digital, doesn't matter which way you put it. There's a camera mounted in the back of the vehicle up top and you can see everything uh, coming up behind you. And when you actually get out on the road, you're really gonna appreciate it because you can see for a real long ways. So if you happen to be renting our very first uh, Pro Camp, the prototype one, it's gonna be the black unit. And the black unit is hooked up just slightly differently in order to make the, the uh, power go to the rear bed here, you just have to have the um, ignition, the key in the ignition and turn it in the accessories area so you have power going back there. And then the bed will go down. When you're done, just turn it off and you're gonna be good to go. go Again, one difference on that very first prototype van we made, the black one, uh, this is the remote for all the other vans. The very first one had a wall mounted unit and when you're looking at it, pretty, it operates the same way. You turn it on, you push the button, you know, it'll light up and do everything. You, again, you want to make sure it's on Fahrenheit or push it on, on, on the switch on Fahrenheit. Um, but the other thing you want to do is this one has a snowflake when it's in, in AC mode. That one it just says cool. So when you're looking at the screen, if it says cool, AC is on.